What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a uh, little something I want to share with you guys. Um, we are on this podcast this week called The Personal Paradigm. Now, if you've never heard of it, um, it's on Spotify, it's on Anchor, it's on Google Podcast, uh, a lot of podcasts. But go follow my cousin, uh, Graphics by Andrew, on um, Instagram. I will leave his um, name down below. But this is uh, the episode that we guest start on. I told him that I would put it on the channel. That way we can uh, help promote and get the word out about his podcast out there. Um, his is only on streaming, so you can only listen to it. But um, we have a, we gave, he was nice enough to edit and give us the podcast. And I told him I would share it on the channel. So this is a little intro, just giving you an idea of what his podcast is about. It's literally about life, everything. You know, he talks about everything. And uh, he's got a lot of good guests lined up in the future. So go follow him. New episodes come out with him every week. So uh, of course, go follow them and like it and all that good stuff. And uh, without further ado, this is uh, the episode of Personal Paradigm, uh, guest starring the Knights of Horror, Sammy and I. So I hope you guys enjoy. Rookie. Who's the rookie? Rookie. Me, this guy. Andrew Zaragoza, with the Personal Paradigm. We are here setting up for episode six of my channel, and yeah, more to come later. Welcome everybody to a collaboration channel between the Personal Paradigm and my co-anchor, also my cousin Anthony Zaragoza. We also have another co-anchor as well, Mr. Samuel. And What's up? what is up, guys? Personal, we are just personal here. paradigm, man. This is it. Yeah, this is pretty neat. Uh, it's my first time like using some high quality um, gear set. Like you know, my my two guys right here that I'm sharing this room with and this space with is just uh, these guys are the masters. They're they're the masters of their craft. I wouldn't say master. We just. We do a lot of stuff. <laughs> we we kind of wing it as we go. Yeah, we're a little bit more seasoned, but yeah. you know, I, I I've been a, I've been a big fan of the podcast thus far, of the personal paradigm. And once I saw Tony had posted that you had dropped something, I was like, it was like eleven o'clock at night. I was like, go to bed, listen to this first episode. <laughs> you know, listen to this first episode real quick. Oh, nice. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, it's um. It's been it's been a huge inspiration, you know, just seeing you guys out on the street, just out, you know, supporting the horror community and supporting uh, the gamer community and film, and really just sharing your guys's insight, you know, with everybody coming in. I mean, I, I'm in this corner, and I, you know, I would like peek in a little bit and see the recordings and things like that, but to now actually share the space on this level is is a whole nother experience. I right. Mean, yeah. It's, uh, there's all kinds of guests and and sharing conversation and just sharing um, stories, uh, which I'm a huge fan of, and I think it's it's very much uh, uh, much needed. You know, creating conversation around all these certain things, but you guys do it in a fashion where it's 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 really cool um, looking to the horror community and and all the art behind it. I mean, I think the biggest thing about having guests on our show is just shooting your shot, man. It's like. You know, we we're not a big we're not a big channel. We're not even at a thousand subs yet. We're almost there, but I, I think just coming up, it's like looking at it as more on a you know, you're small, I'm small. Let's you know, let's work together and promote both of our things. And I think the biggest thing going into interviews with us is always just you know, how are we gonna entertain our guests and how are we gonna make them want to come back for more? Yeah, definitely. And um, we do that by getting guests that either have been requested to us uh, and trying to shoot a shot with them or guests that we know are, are well-known figures or people in the, in the horror community, uh, YouTube community or whatever. And I think the, the biggest thing with us, like I said, is just making sure we make that content where people want to come back week after week. Um, we've had so many great guests that we've just kind of shot our, our shot and, and asked people to come on and they were very nice enough to do so. Um, I think one of the biggest things for us this last year was when we did our Scare Actor Appreciation Month um, because we were getting so many feedback saying like, yeah, we, we haven't seen anything like this. And, you know, and, and it was a big, it was a big, put a big smile on our face because we, we knew we started something that people will enjoy. People want to hear these stories from people and, and, and so, so on and so forth. So I think after that ended with us, it was kind of like, where do we go from here? Yeah. Um, and 
originally our podcast was actually styled around sharing horror news and updating people on what's going on in the horror world. Um, Bloody Disgusting is a very big website that we use a lot of our sources from, so we would pull sources from them and just talk about it on our podcast. Um, sometime this year, though, I was just like, I, I kind of want to transition our show more into a kind of like a talk show. Yeah, Where we, we get guests every week and um, we talk with them. Me and Sammy realized we can't get guests every week sometimes, and especially in the midst of what's going on in the world right now with totally. the whole coronavirus and stuff, but... You know, it's causing us to postpone some shows and, and maybe turn to alternatives into Skype. But me and Sammy have grown to like the face-to-face interview now. Yeah. No, yeah. Do it oh, in right. person. It, it's, it's better just when they're sitting here with us. It's, it's a different vibe than yeah. over a Skype call. It's, it's like, like you're just sitting here with a buddy and getting to have a conversation and, and just share some stories with each other and uh, really get to, you know, for whatever it be, 45 minutes to an hour three hours at times it's been <laughs> yeah uh you know sit, sit in each other's shoes for a few seconds and get a different perspective on life and I, I think that's something i've been enjoying about your podcast is really just getting a, a taste of what's going on in your life you know yeah what's going through your head what you aspire to be totally. um and, you know those are some really cool things to be able to just you know as someone who, who's, who's just met you recently over the last year to be able to be like okay this is what like andrew's down with you know this is his goals yeah uh, I know that you obviously are a jack of all trades, um, and you you fit naturally. Into I mean, when things. he came, when he first moved in, it was music, and now he's big. That he's, I mean, he's always been in the art scene, but yeah. now he's back in the art scene again, and yeah. I'm 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 slowly persuading him to try to balance everything, get back into music because I know he was doing good on that. Yeah, I remember like, I had my whole setup. There here. was like there was like weeks where I'd come back from work when I was working days, and he'd just be in here working on beats. I'd be trying to make videos, but you know, I don't. I wouldn't even care because the guy's doing him, you know, and. I also really like the vibe of the music you have on this podcast, like, like kind of the theme music you have going throughout. It's pretty sick, to be honest. Thank you. Yeah, I really want to Did you do that, or did you uh, not do that? I wish I did. It's actually uh. Anchor's um, back end of, you know, the producing and the content was um, I scanned through a lot of their beats, and I was really interested in, you know, what kind of fit the style of the, the flavor of the channel that I was looking into, and, you know, incorporating arts and, and incorporating just my whole um, character into into the channel, I really had to just dial down to the music um, and just the audio that's going to incorporate with it and just the um, the casualness and the style that I would like to promote and, and beats um, were so essential to that and so I did, decided to choose the Compton beats. Um, now, in the future, I would like to create more music to incorporate like we had spoken as far as just um, getting back onto a balanced um, display of, of the music and the arts and things like that. So um, maybe I would I would like to you know record some beats around just this this new channel and, and getting it started uh, where it is more of my original content. And on on top of that, yeah, like I mean, like we had spoken about um, earlier with with cor- coronavirus and things like that, is that it's because now there's a lot more self quarantine going on and social distancing. Um, even though it is social distancing, people are still going to need to find a way to connect. And I think this digital space is paramount, uh, more so than ever because of just the amount of communication and connection that is still uh, needed, uh, given given this, this time. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, everybody is going to need content to, to satiate themselves for a while, to stay entertained, um, such as like with a lot of the horror venues that we're speaking about. Well, yeah, um, and, and like the a lot of, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like a lot of yeah. stuff has been getting canceled. Yeah, and it's like we have, you know, there's a thing coming up uh, in April. It was a free event, thankfully. I mean, but you still had to, you know, sign up for tickets and everything just so they can get a number of how many people are going to show up. And it was gonna, it was called Spook Show, and it was gonna be in the parking lot of the Halloween Club off the Five Freeway. Oh, okay. And uh, that got postponed. Um, you know, theme parks are shutting down. Me, yeah. and, me and Sammy on the off time, we like to go to Disneyland and hang out and chill, kind of get away right? from work. It's like, where to go now? We can't, we can't do that. Um, that's close to the end of March. And, um, you know, uh, we were thankful that Frankenstein's, we went to Frankenstein's today, and we were thankful that that was still open. They didn't shut down their operation because, you know, more than 250 people are going to be there. So uh, they had like a little spook kind of, I, I wouldn't say spook show, but it was like a little little pop-up for like a little Halloween thing that they did it was really cool to see all the vendors come out and you know we, we bought a couple of prints to show our support um, we ran into a fan and he was actually one of the vendors and we talked That's to him a little right. bit um, 
and we bought some stuff off him, which we were going to be hanging up on our set pretty soon. But, I mean, it, it really blows, I mean, the door down for us because, you know, we have a lot of conventions coming up. This is the season where uh, it's, it picks up a little bit, but it doesn't, you know, it's not too chaotic. It yeah. doesn't really start getting chaotic for us t- until announcement season for Halloween Horror Nights starts. Uh, all the theme parks will start announcing mazes and stuff, but oh, totally. um, usually from June all the way till like November, that's our busiest. Yeah, it's that's prime our peak time. season. Yeah, like, I remember like I would come into the office and I would think like, dude, like where is this guy? His his corner has been empty, and then I'm just hearing um, like you know rehearsals and things like that, and just the back end of the content that is just being pushed out. And I I remember like when I first came in here. It was October, and you were on your grind, and then the end of October hit. I was like, "Oh, now he's gonna kick back and he's gonna relax." And I was like, "Oh, so," and I hit you up. And I was like, "Oh, so you know what's uh, so what's on the agenda now?" And he's like, "Scare Actor Appreciation Month." I'm like, "What's that?" And then, it was, uh, yeah, it was an yeah. idea. Um, me and Sammy, uh, this this past haunt season in 2019, we would go to Knotts every weekend. Uh, Thursday through Sunday, we were there usually. Uh, if not there, at Halloween Horror Nights. So yeah. We went to, I went to Horror Nights five times. What did you go, like four times, I think? Three, yeah. three times, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, Horror Nights is a little bit of a drive for us to go out there every weekend. So we, you know, we bought a frequent fear, and as long as we got, like, five or three trips in, we were okay with that. And um, so we would head out to Knott's. By the way, if you guys are looking to go to Knott's a lot this season, I suggest buying the annual pass. 90 oh, bucks totally. with and if you had the parking it's an extra 75 but within like what three trips of just the parking alone and three trips of just or not even three like a trip or two yeah of not scary farm alone you it's already paid for itself Definitely. i mean yeah. parking at the at the park is like 20 something bucks 25 yeah 25 yeah, right and then all day know, general mission to get on a single day is like anywhere from it depends on the night but it can go from anywhere from like 40 to 80 bucks yeah it depends on if you buy online or if you buy at the gate yeah and it also depends on the night you go like saturday's obviously is going to be 80 bucks yeah because that's their peak that night friday nights as well um but we would go to we would go to haunt and just kind of chill we had a we had a bench and uh andrew actually made us a logo uh the kmart bench we were the not uh, scary KSW farm bench warmers bench warmers um and we got known around the park for that because all we would do is go to different scare zones watch everybody work and <laughs> but we were sitting around one night, and I was like, we need to do a podcast where we get some people on. We already had, like, two or three friends on the show, and we were um, we were, uh, we were, were working on that and stuff. But um, it, it's, been a, it's been a grind. I mean, um, yeah. All right. So we, we got pizza. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh my god, um, it was it was worth it. It was <laughs> worth it. Uh, so if you hear us chewing in the background, I, I deeply apologize, but mm-hmm. you know we're hungry. So um, anyway, but we we would go to Knotts every weekend and um, chill on our bench. And then you know I finally just told Sammy, I'm like, hey man, we should uh, you know do something with the scare actors. You know maybe interview. We already had about three of them that we knew working there, and uh, so obviously it would start with them. We got two out of the three because one of them uh, had a busy work schedule, and so we were like, that's fine. Um, but we got we got the first two on there, and uh, you know, and I approached because one of the one of the, uh, the the people that we got is actually a good friend of ours um, who we collab with all the time. A channel called Fracture Compass Productions on YouTube, um, and her name's Jackie. And um, uh, the other person that we got is actually one I co-run a gaming channel with. Her name's Ruth. She actually you met her the other day. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the. The concept was just to get them on, listen to some of their stories, because if you know any scare actors, they have some of the funniest, they have some of the um, brutalist and some of the most out-of-this-world out stories. Oh, I bet. I mean, um, they, they come in co- contact with anybody. Oh, They're yeah. Gonna... I mean, we firsthand saw a lot of the stories they told us, too, <laughs> that we got to interview. Um, but, I mean, you know, you're hearing stuff from, like, getting punched in the face and, you know, um, you know, Flooring people, which in, in in the term of flooring is when they scare someone so bad they just fall to the floor. That happened before, like that happens like all the time. Like they would faint and then not or... faint. They just get so scared they just drop to the floor and start <laughs> like, getting scared and screaming and stuff. And we saw that a numerous amount of times this season. And um, so yeah, the idea was just to bring on scare actors. So uh, when we thought of it, that was like mid season, and we started hitting up scare actors. So every night we would we we had business cards made. 
for uh, this purpose. I don't know. When did we get business cards made? During hot season, huh? Mm -hmm. So we had business cards made for this, uh, for when if anyone ran into us or if we ran into anybody and they were interested in our channel. I mean, instead of just explaining who we are, we just gave them a card. It had all of our info on it and everything. So what we would do is um, we would chill in ghost town most of the nights. And what we would do is hand out business cards to the characters. Because a lot of them by that point already knew who we were. Nice. <laughs> a lot of them just put on the couch. A lot of them by, n by now knew who we were because we would chill every weekend. We got to know a lot of them, and a lot of them were really cool. So we would start handing character cards out and, you know, just hit us up on Instagram. We have uh, an idea for a show that we want to do, and we want to see if you're interested. So a lot of us, a lot of, we got a lot of great feedback from it. And even some accounts that were just so famous we knew, we would hit them up, and, you know, we, we got a lot of good people. So eventually we got everything organized, and November came around. Well, we actually started, I think, October 30th. Yeah, we started at towards the end. Towards the end, because that was the only free day that uh, our first two guests had, which was, a th or three guests, should I say, yeah. which was Fractured Compass Productions and Ruth. Um, so we got them on, we filmed their episode, and we put that out uh, November 1st. So, because uh, the characters, we would take pictures with them, they were cool. If you're really cool with the characters, they'll let you, they'll take you in a secret spot, you can take pictures with them. Yeah, we don't yeah. expect it, just... Yeah, just let don't it, let it organically. Let it, let it, yeah, right. yeah, you yeah, can't, you can't just go up to them like opening of... night and be like, "Can I get a picture with you?" You like, you have to. In order to earn that picture opportunity, you gotta be one of those people who are constantly there every weekend. And and so it got to the point where we actually knew a lot of people, and they were they were cool with it. And but um, and, and it's cool by management. We we, we we you know we made sure that was <coughs> the big thing was when we took the pictures. If management was cool with it, and this That's character nice. said, "As long as we know you guys, as long as it's friends or family." They don't care as long as it's out of sight and, you know, they can't see it. That way we keep the, the veil of us being our characters. That's okay. And we're like, okay. Um, so we put up the first episode. A lot of characters were like, oh, well, how, you know, how, what's, what exactly are we going to do and stuff? I was like, well, the first episode is up now. We basically just sat down and just kind of bullshitted about what your guys' season was. Wow. And a lot of – we got a lot of positive feedback from that. And so – we didn't expect to get a lot of the people that we did. We got a lot of the right. heavy hitters. I remember it was like yeah. sometimes once, definitely once a week, twice a week, sometimes oh, and then three times a week. It, it, yeah, it would yeah. get to the point where it'd be like we'd do one every night of the week. Like Sammy would text us who we have on tonight, who I got to prepare questions for tonight. And, you know, we would go back and forth about, you know, that would be our a majority of our, our daytime while we're on our, at our daytime jobs is going back and forth as to, what are we doing tonight? What are we doing tonight? You know, what who are we gonna what are we gonna ask and stuff? So, we had eventually just made an essential question list that we were gonna ask all the scare actors, but eventually we would just go off and wander about, you know, what was going on with them. They would talk to us longer and and stuff like that. So we had an essential list, but you know, and and if you watch our scare Actor appreciation month, you'll hear a lot of the same questions, which right. it's just that's just what we had prepared. So. Yeah, we got an amazing feedback from it. We got a lot of heavy hitter characters that are like really famous that come out in documentaries, have done panels, have just had their face put on merchandise, are like the faces of the company. Um, and we were just shocked to get a lot of these people, a lot of responses. Uh, and originally, we only had people from the Ghost Town Scare Zone. So we eventually started branching out. We got, last year, we got one person from Carnival which is the clown scare zone, and then um, I think like two or three people from The Hollow, which is in Camp Snoopy, and... One from Forsaken, didn't we? No, we never... Oh, yeah, we got one from Forsaken Lake, which was in the Silver Bullet area, and um, yeah, it got really... It got so big that actually when mid... As we were doing this in the middle, characters started contacting us on social media asking if they can be on the show. Oh, man, so it just grew into and, a movement where... Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of... There was a lot of people we would have loved to have on the show, but because of our schedule and because we only wanted to do it in November, yeah, you know, just to kind of keep that deal. And I think we even released like two episodes in December just because we had so many episodes and so much footage that, you know, it came out. But just because of the overwhelming demand of, you know, people wanting to be on the show, people wanting more, I mean, it, it was really hard to say no. Oh, definitely. But it's like, you know, everybody wants to be on and featured. And exactly. It's just, yeah, and it, it was really hard to say no, I mean, because a lot of the people we said no to were some good scare actors, um, and if it were up to us, we, we would be doing it still to this day. Oh, totally. But, it, it, you know, you got to know when to put your foot down. You don't want to get burned out, and, 
you don't want to you know overwork yourself that that was the biggest thing with scared to appreciation month as much fun as we were having doing it i think just on my side because um for the channel i do all the editing and everything and um i think on, on my side it was just i was just getting burnt out because oh. i had deadlines i had to meet i had i had you know to get them out by a certain day and you know it, me and him i mean he makes all my thumbnails so i mean he was driving him kind of nuts a little bit that that scared appreciation month and you know yeah on top of that planning content totally original good. content outside of podcasting so i mean and then of course we do summer of guests which is in the summer where we did that last summer and we'll be doing it again this summer that one isn't too as chaotic it's whenever we're, we're i think for this next uh summer of guests we're just gonna plan a podcast a week so it's about 15 16 weeks or something like that yeah, just like about that. Yeah. yeah so we're gonna have one each week that way we're not burning ourselves out it's a podcast a week and we're good yeah that will give you more time to put out high quality um content on a more predictable basis while at the same time getting that balance uh, you know yeah. rest and recovery just to really go on to the next project so, with the same amount of energy and focus. as far as what's going to happen with this year with character appreciation month we we don't know um, it worked out so good last year because I was on days. So at, right Sorry. after work, they can come at like 5 or 6. It was perfect for him because he got off around that time. And they can come down, record the podcast, and I can edit a little bit. And then when I got home, you know, that gap between the next guest coming on for the next day or, you know, by the time I got off work to the next guest, um, I can edit while waiting. And um, that was just our, our biggest thing. So this year, we don't know how we're going to organize it. Um, being that I work nights, um, and you know he'll still be on days no matter what. But yeah. I'm on nights, so I don't get on. Till, I don't get off till like 11:30 unless I can get a position where I get off a little bit earlier. Yeah. But even then, it's like that's too late of, of the night for people to come out. And so we're gonna see. Uh, we're we're for sure. I can guarantee you, we're gonna do it again this year. But we might be having a stack guest in the weekend, like Saturdays and Sundays. We might be having to have, have like five guests at a time come over and yeah, film five do. episodes on a Saturday, five episodes on a Sunday totally. just to grind the content out. Yep. So we'll see where that goes. But I don't know, man. It's It's been a grind the last uh, three years we've been doing this channel. Uh, we started the channel in 2017. 27, yeah, that's right. I remember uh, I remember seeing it. Well, <clears throat> the more the more I got to hang around here a lot, uh, I really got to get a more of a more in-depth experience about the next horror and and then I was searched through like your guys' very first videos and then oh, yeah. just the growth from like the beard, you know, and yeah. then and the layout of, of the setup and no, like you guys yeah. have like just like a small desk. Oh yeah. Um, when I first started actually the corner you're sitting in is where I would set up the thing and that wall right there that's uh, you face, that was my set. It was yeah. literally a walking dead poster, a couple maps. I think I had a um, I had another poster at the time. But I got rid of it. Oh, it was a. Uh, I forget what poster it was, but it was another crappy poster. I don't even know if I have it in here anymore. But um, I eventually changed that out for the. I bought a World War Z poster and put that up. Man. And then eventually I bought the Frankenstein poster, which actually is a staple of our set now because, um, you know, horror wouldn't be what it is without the classic monsters. Oh, you know? right. The classic monsters really set the the uh, foundation for horror coming in the next couple of years you know in the 1930s when they when universal launched all their monsters you know frankenstein dracula the mummy creature uh visible man all these yeah, iconic the wolf monsters. man wolf man yeah. yeah i mean they have a special place in the knights of horror where we symbolize that with frankenstein because frankenstein was is one of the biggest horror icons out there frankenstein's monster should i say but um yeah, I mean, and then if you look at our set and any of our videos, I mean, we do a plethora of not only just original horror, but throughout the years. You said plethora. Is that wrong? Plethora. Plethora, whatever. That's funny, though. It's plat I thought it was like plethora or something. Plethora actually sounds pretty Shout nice. Shout out to fucking Sammy being Wikipedia over here. Plethora, man. You know that's my job name. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but, uh, we, I mean, we have all of the eras of horror. I mean, we go from classic to, like, the slashers to even new stuff. I mean, you know, Negan's Bats on there, Three from Hell. We have we have some haunt memorabilia on here that actually, during Scratch Appreciation Month, they gave us. So, I mean, theme parks are on there. I mean, it's just a little bit of everything on there. So, I mean... Going forward with this channel, I never thought I would be 
where I'm at right now. I mean, I've I've tried YouTube prior like two or three other times, and it just I never gained an audience. And then when I started Nights of Horror, it originally started with me expressing my opinion about Halloween Horror Nights, and a lot of the video early videos are just always about Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. Um, but when 2018 came around and Halloween Horror Nights was over, I was like, okay. What am I going to do in the off season? Because I can't just keep talking about Horror Nights all year. It gets yeah. eventually burnt out, and there's not enough content to do it all year. Especially over a year spread on top of um, just the main the main activities that go on. Uh, the fact that you guys branched out into so many other different avenues, like community horror events, Scare Actor Appreciation Month, um, man, just all these other content. I just really love horror. But I, I didn't mean to cut you off, too. No, you're good. I think that's what I think that's what I enjoy a lot about our channel as well is, you know, we we spoke about this earlier on the podcast about like us being a a channel that helps other people that may be in the same situation of you know not having a lot of people, but you know say hey like I have my platform maybe you can gain some more followings or to share your experiences and your stories with people because I know a lot of people that listen especially like to our character appreciation month who we gained a lot of followers from. Oh right. Um, Got, we're like, oh, I did, I had no idea it was this deep, especially because we took a really deep look at the Not Scary Farm, specifically like Ghost Guns we mentioned, and like how much work actually goes into this, because although they're out there in the streets only for like six weeks from, you know, middle of September through like the way beginning of November, you know, a lot of these times, these guys have already been thinking about their character for months or years and are focusing on like every little detail from their walk to facial expressions to you know or do they talk or is they or do they not talk or and yeah i mean like touching up on that a little bit we are now seeing because we still keep in contact with a lot of those characters yeah. we are now seeing the behind the scenes of this happening i mean people are are adding to their origin stories because with an event like not scary farm uh storylines are constantly changing totally. you know they, they constantly are updating the event every year to a, a different theming so the scare actors have to adjust their storylines to fit in with that theming um and there's like this huge puzzle really if you think about it because not only are they really creating uh their own character but they're trying to fit their puzzle piece into the larger scheme of the event which is remarkable and the amount of creativity that really goes into that i mean like i know that i had i haven't talked to tony about this but like Really hearing one of the guests we had earlier this year was named Ted Doherty, um, and he's real big in the haunt community. And hearing how the stuff he was working on 15, 20 years is playing ago is now playing a role in modern day Not Scary Farm. And like, you know, their 40 some odd years of history is really just ridiculous, you know, what to think about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool to see the behind the scenes as a fan because you're really getting the the gist and it's getting you more excited you know i, I mean I've, I've had the opportunity to read a lot of the backstories so i get more of an idea of these characters Definitely. just going into next year that way i kind of get more of their story um I'm, i've been fortunate enough to be with friends with so many of them that they are, are willing to let me read them oh, wow. and stuff so that's been really cool to kind of and, and i do it and i'm not doing it to like put anyone on the, on the spot or anything i i'm more doing it because i want to be uh i want to follow this storyline i want to see where these characters are in the storyline and I kind of wish, um, I mean, I guess you can do that if you follow a lot of their social medias, which they, a lot of them do on Instagram. But I think the biggest thing was I wish Knots would release a lot of these stories. Oh, definitely. Either in a book or something, because a lot of these characters, they're very talented. We've met and are friends with so many of them that we hear their ideas for uh, stories and stuff. And... It is such an amazing experience to just sit there and kind of just hear this, for at least for their backstories and stuff, because this character you had no idea was related or associated with this character, because you would never know if you went to the event, you would never know that. Uh, and it's the small interactions that these characters have with each other that, um, if you read these backstories and then see those interactions on the street, it adds more of oh, the wow. suspense to it. Um, and I, like I said, I've been fortunate enough to know a lot of people who have been working on their backstories and stuff, and it's been a really cool uh, process to to read a lot of these, and uh, they get really detailed into it. Like, yeah, I think I think it's a it's a really good, I think it's a great idea just creating 
the story, you know, of the character, the character's backstory, how they interact yeah. with the other characters, and to to be able to create a book of all the characters and their interactions and their backstories and the overall narrative of, you know, the current theme of that specific year. Yeah, Calico um, eighteen eighty six, I believe, or seventeen seventy six. Yeah, I know it goes up a year every year, but yeah, I think last year was eighteen eighty six, but it's supposed to be cowboy time. So yeah, yeah. right. So what what would what would be a greater um, you know product, a greater piece of merchandise that everybody can take home than a book where they can scan through all the characters and keep yeah. that drive into the next year and, and create the future generation of. Of uh, scare actors or these little kids, you know that that are so thrilled by going to the Knott's Berry Farm, and they continue to see the same actors there yeah. to get that sense of predictability. It's like, man, like, you know, like, um. So I think just the growth of the characters would be great as far as a long term sense of storytelling for Knott's Berry Farm, um, and Not Scary Farm as well, and uh, just just the amount of effort and creativity that all of these actors, um, and all of these you know creative professionals put into their craft and into their and to their costumes is, is beyond amazing. So, like, don't they have to like put on their own makeup and their own? Well, costumes? yeah, they have they have makeup artists in the back and stuff. But yeah. a lot of them are, are mask based. But a lot of them go out of their way, and a lot of the characters, some of the characters actually are mask makers. Yeah. And um, we actually are fortunate enough to know one of those mask makers. Um, but the one that we know designs amazing work. I mean, he's designed a lot of the masks you see out there. Uh, for this past season at least um, one of our favorite characters and one of our good friends Jackie again she played a character called the, the she wolf and uh, I think you I know, did see that one yeah yep. she her mask looks dope as shit um, and the same thing with Orphan another one Ruth she her mask is fucking dope as shit too but it took me a while to actually see that that was a mask I thought she was wearing makeup this entire time and mm-hmm. then like behind the scenes of stuff like you, you saw it was a mask, and she's like, you know, so I'm seeing this, and I'm like, wow, I didn't know that was a mask. I thought that was makeup. And um, and we met a lot of people who, I mean, they, they, the, the masks they wear, it looks like makeup, but some of them are actually really good. Some of them actually go full-blown makeup. Um, another one of the, one of my favorite uh, duo of masks is uh, Lucy and Billy. Um, they're supposed to be like uh, orphan children from hell, or like a demon possessed them or something. And if you see their, their mask design, it's really cool. What I've been comparing it to a lot, if, if there's any comic book fans out there, is uh, there was a, a, a comic storyline they did uh, a little bit ago on the New 52 with Joker where he peels off his face, cuts off his face, That's right. and yeah, staples it back on. That's right. It looks a lot it's reminiscent black. to that. When he stapled it back on and his smile is all like that, it looks really reminiscent to that. Okay. Um, and then one night they did, they did actual uh, makeup on their face, and it looked dope as well, too. Um, the bride, she's her her makeup is dope. Oh yeah, it's her overall ridiculous. her overall character is just is scary to be around because yeah. you know she's this bride. She carries a candle and she's constantly smiling. And the thing about the thing I like about her character and same thing with Lucy and Billy is they don't talk to anyone. They just will go around and scare people, and it's cool because I know Lucy and Billy's story, and I'm hoping one day we can get the bride on the show. But I want to know more of the bride's story because. Yeah. Um, you know her, her, her. You know she's wearing a wedding dress for one, and she's this bride. So I want to know: is it reminiscent to haunted mansion? You know, is it like something where like she killed her husbands or something, or she was always left at the altar? I don't know what's her story really, but she's a very eerie character to be around. And I um, think that's one of the coolest things, you know, with just character creation and just seeing them and for what they are is that, you know, and one of the best examples that I have is. Kind of, he's kind of well. He's a, he's a figure of terror and a figure of just uh, being a horrific human being. But like Dark Knight's Joker, like yeah. he had no backstory, which is of course you know kind of reminiscent of the original Joker and you know just the ambiguous uh, background behind it. Yeah. But like Dark, you know the Dark Knight's Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker, it, it was made intentionally for him to not have a backstory. He just he's just his character that just waltz right on in. And that was the cool thing about his Joker was the fact that like every time you saw him, it was something different with his backstory. Oh yeah. It was either about his dad, about his wife, you know, the, him being a kid. I mean, he had, he always had something a new story to share with uh, his victims, and um, very chaotic thing. And going back to Knotts, I mean, we talked to one of the guys, um, one of the another famous guy, his name's Merrick, 
he is a character who just goes around the park all night and yells at people with a thunder jug. And a thunder jug is essentially a gas can, and they put the rocks in it. And you've probably seen him around. I think I have. He shakes yeah. it. Shake it, and oh, you hear the sound. So his essential character is he's a cowboy, but uh, in his in his jug is like is like spirits and stuff. And oh, so wow. he's hearing what he's talking to essentially is the spirits. They're talking to him, and he's talking back, but he's talking to you as he's doing it. And um, there's a great documentary on YouTube. It's called The Slayers of Ghost Town. And there's actually a segment where they show him. And he, like, literally will – there's skeletons on top of, like, the, like, the hotel of Ghost Town. And he'll literally look up and start talking to them and yelling at them, like, telling them to shut up mm-hmm. and stuff. And his character, uh, when we interviewed him, a lot of his inspiration was Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah. Get into character. And uh, he, he likes to listen to, like, a lot of scores and stuff. Uh, the Dark Knight score was a big – influence on him when he would get ready in character and he like oh, listen wow. to a lot of metal and stuff to really hype him up um and yeah but i mean i, I think overall our, I, our goal for for this channel is just you know doing character appreciation month doing our podcast i mean i could see this year alone i've been really focusing more on all the podcasts that i've been doing rather than original content and i want to start going back to making it equal again Definitely. i mean uh, I'm, I love doing the podcast. I love having guests on week after week, um, and I love filming content. Um, and it, it's it's kind of hard scheduling stuff because, like I said, me and Sammy have different hours of, of work. So I mean, it would have been easier if I was back on days and he can come throughout the week and we can film some videos. Um, but we make do what we can. I mean, most of the time, if you see an original video filmed, it will just be me um, because I get a lot of my ideas late at night. Oh, right. That's that's the best way to do it. You stay up and, you know, there's no, there's a limited amount of distractions, you know, like family doesn't come in or, you know, someone texts you, school, all that, all that other stuff. Because staying up late at night, it's just, it's just one of those things where it's just you and the ideas are coming in and yeah. it's like, what am I going to do now? I got them. Let's get it going. Well, it's like a lot of the times I'll be watching TV or playing video games and I'll think of like, oh, that's a good idea for a video. Maybe I should do that real quick. Um and I'll, I'll, I'll get on my camera and do it real quick. Um, sometimes I'll text Sammy some ideas, or he'll he'll shoot me some ideas. Um, but yeah, I mean, when we started the channel, like I said, it was all Holy Horror Nights based. And then 2018 came around, and I was like, I want to take this a step further. I want to launch a podcast. Now, podcasting in the last 10 years has grown. It's blo- I mean, it's continues to blow up. It continues to blow up. Everyone's doing a podcast now. And I feel like uh, I'm not gonna say I'm a fucking and uh, people who uh, you know, but like um, I feel like with people listening to my podcast and people seeing how small I am, it encouraged a lot of people to do podcasts. I mean, yeah, I was one of them. Yeah, I mean, he. I mean, you were sitting here when I do some of them, and and I could see that you were you were listening in and stuff. And eventually, you came up to me and told me like, hey, I want to I want to start doing that. Like, and then. And then Lucille, same thing. When we started doing Cinema Dudes, he's like, I've been wanting to do the podcast. And, you know, I mean, I, I like I said, the podcasting game has just been blowing up like crazy. Everyone has one. There's podcasts about a bunch of subjects out Everything. there. Everything. Everything, oh, yeah. Right? It's like... Science, comedy, horror, movies, TV shows, music, you know, everything out. History, um... Whatever you can podcast, gaming. I mean, gaming, it's, it's, yeah. it's about it. There's, there's podcasts literally for anything out there. Any subject, any topics. I mean, there's so many great podcasts out there. It's really hard to keep up with all of them. And I think I think this is one of the byproducts of um, just the awareness of trying to get information that is not so readily available. I mean, when you t- when you turn on TV and there's Fox and ABC and all of this information, and I think there's a lot more skepticism. You know, reading reading um, different different channels or different newscasts uh, because sometimes you know so, some things get warped, and because there's so much access to the internet and access to all these channels, um, why not get a second opinion? Why not go check in with with another podcaster or, or someone who is kind of credible or bringing a better better sense of information that is more tailored to to the re- to the listener, the reader, and and yeah, I agree. I mean, podcasting has been so um, powerful, you know, with just trying to see what's what's going on, you know, within a certain community, within a population, or even like um, a, with a, within a certain field or a genre. And um, yeah, like you guys had said, it, it's very much just 
um, there's a, there's a channel and a, and a subject for everyone. Um, yeah, I was definitely inspired by you guys as far as just doing your guys' grind. I would tune in, and then just recently my friend, she, she just launched one too, and I helped her. I helped her with her logo and designed it for her, and I was just so, I was so thrilled with just wanting to see, like, what this channel could bring, what mm -hmm. the rest of our channels could bring, and how all these, all these, you know, cross-collaboration ideas, uh, like the horror, and create, just cross podcasting channels yeah uh, just joining in on someone's show and, and, and that's the biggest thing i think with me is like i love collaborating collaboration yeah. is is a key for our channel i mean we've collaborated we've been fortunate enough to collaborate with so many great people so many channels that are either as small or a little bit bigger than us yeah and we've had the fortunate to interview directors we've had the fortunate uh to interview composers um people who are big in the haunt industry rick west was our last podcast um as of this recording, as of, you know, he was our last major guest that we had on the show. And if you guys don't know who Rick West is, I mean, if you guys have ever heard of a convention called Midsummer Scream, he is the creative director behind that. And you know, this is a convention that sells like forty thousand tickets a year. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so this and, and he was he was in this room. He or was in this room. He just came in and he was just so open arms. He was like, "Yeah, we'll do it." He oh loved doing gosh. podcasts, and he was awesome. And um, you know, he came with full of surprises, and and he had he was. The thing about w with our podcast is like um, a lot of the guests we have on, they've never been on a podcast sometimes. Yeah. So a lot of the times they're going in there kind of quiet in the beginning, but then once we get them going, they will keep going and it's awesome. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just, and but, I think I think seeing that you know being on this side and and really seeing how everybody opens up and really just expressing themselves in a way that hasn't been done before, like in in their in their stage of life. Especially, you know, being out on the field, such as being, like, in Not Very Farm, behind a mask, you guys are providing a space for them to kind of just open up that mask. And kind say, of vent in a way, you know? Me. Yes, I mean, it's, totally. a, it's like a little venting session. And, I mean, and then the, you got some guests that are like Rick West, who literally, once you get them started, from the very beginning to the very finish, they're just they're, they're ready to go. They're eager to be there. And, yes. And I'm not saying all the guests that we've had are not eager to be there, because every guest that we've had, have been super nice to us, have been super cool, Definitely. have given us a ton of information, and have just given us some of the greatest content mm -hmm. I can ever ask for. Oh, man. You know, I, I, I have I have one thing planned, but then it goes it always goes another direction, and it, yeah. it always ends up good. Always. Um, but I think there's no better feeling than when we do have the opportunity to, to shoot this podcast with different people, and being like, oh, that was our best one, and then... yeah. The, the next, next one, one comes, comes and it's like, like wow, oh, wow that was a lot, lot of fun. Too. Yeah, it's like it's one of those things where like, how are we gonna top it from there? And yeah. for some reason, we always do. Right. And um, it's no no shit talk on all of our guests that we've had on. It's just one of those things where it's like, um, you know, every person's different, so everyone has something different to share, and everyone has opinions to share and different likes to share, and and we're interested in hearing all that. Yeah. Um, and I think we're also interested in letting you know letting people know that. The more time you put into something, the better you're going to end up doing at it. Yeah. Uh, as long as you open yourself up to creative criticism and criticism that is positive. Obviously, you know, Definitely. some people are going to say negative things and may want to bring you down. But, like, I think at the end of the day, you got to be willing to listen to people that you trust. Yeah, definitely. Being like, hey, how, this is how I can do better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This is what I've done today. This is how I'm going to do better tomorrow. Yep. Uh, and, yeah. and, you know, I think... All of us have done different things in our lives and been like, okay, like I did good at this, but how could I do better? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think that's something, you know, at least it's what the vibe I've been trying to get off of, uh, you know, this this podcast, um, you know, that you've been doing here, Andrew, is like, you know, really self-improvement and self-reflection. Uh, yeah, lots of it going on, definitely. Um, and, and, you know, especially with your book, you know, that you're going to be releasing, when is that again? In August? Yeah, I'm gonna be launching it. I'm um, releasing it in August. That is the target gate date. Yeah. That is. But you've been, you've been, you're gonna start doing little previews every now and then, aren't you? Like you're gonna be showing up to events or something. Or? Yeah. Um. So I am planning to show up on a lot of different events. Um. I want to connect with anybody who is willing to just see, you know, more about me, more about the channel, just more about just people that I hang out with and connect with. Um. <clears throat> and yeah, whatever that promotion is gonna look like in any way, shape, or form, that's just. That's just what I'm, I'm there for. I mean, the book itself is 
it's going to be out regardless of whether or not um, whether or not it's going to you know happen or not. You know, it's, uh, well, let me back step. So the book's going to be out. It's going to be out in August. I'm releasing it. Pretty much no questions asked. That's just the way yeah. it's, it's going to happen because um, I want to target around my birthday. And on top of just checking in with all the different artists, all the different you know fields of work that I want to jump into, whether it's um, the art, the business field, community mental health, education, uh, what have you, um, I just really want to make sure that the book itself is a testament not only to my past and to things like that, but also just symbols of, of like hope. Yeah. And and so I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that 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 product, that book, gets pushed out. Um, but it's really more of just um, something they can put out into the world and see where it goes. Yeah. Definitely. That, I mean, and that's the same thing with this channel. It's just like when we started it. When I started it, it was more of just. Let me voice my opinion on Horror Nights. Let me see what I can do. The biggest inspiration, and they're some of my best friends today, um, is a channel called TLAV Media, which originally, when they started, were the League of Extraordinary Vloggers, and they were such a huge inspiration for me starting this channel that um, I was like, okay, uh, you know, I want to do that. I want to, I like what they do. I want to do what I do. And, yeah, definitely. And, and the initial plan was to actually start it with um, our cousin George. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I wanted to be like them. I wanted to kind of do a thing where we sat down, we gave our opinions about the events and everything. And, you know, it, it didn't work out that way. It, it eventually wrapped around me being a kind of solo person, doing it yeah. on my own. And then, you know, come January 2018, I launched the Mindless Horror Podcast. And, you know, George got on board on that for a couple, about a year almost. And uh, he eventually left because we were working on a comic book together. Um, and I think he's still writing that. Yeah. And everything, but when he left, um, it was time to find a new co-host, and so I was doing uh, what was called the mini casts, where um, I would just kind of share news on my own, much like how you how you did when you started, and you just kind of were on just kind of shooting the shit of just what you was on your mind. Yeah. You know what I mean, so much. Um, I was I was doing solo for a little bit, but just kind of releasing some horror news and stuff, and then um, I, I eventually I was going to the gym at that time. And I would I met up with one of my friends from high school who I found out had like a similar passion of filming and stuff like that. So I asked him, "Hey man, you know I do this podcast. I'm looking for a co-host. Do you want to come down?" He's like, "Yeah." So he did that for a couple months, and then he eventually moved. And right around that time, I put the podcast on hold for about a month um, because I didn't have a uh, co-host, and I wanted to do it with a co-host. So right around that time, Sammy had just moved back from college. Um, and uh, I had approached Sammy. I'm like, hey man, listen, I know you know I do this channel because you you know you're one of my my followers and stuff. And I want to know if you would come on and co-host this channel with, or this podcast with me because you know it, it's really it really does make a difference when you have a co-host just because you can carry on a conversation longer and you can make longer podcasts. Definitely. Um, and I think. I think having a co-host, having a co-anchor, having a co-pilot really just shares the um, responsibility of the, the channel itself, you know, just really delegating and collaborating together and to get like a second opinion, to get extra feedback, yeah. to really build off each other's ideas and to see like, okay, like, is this a good idea? I don't know. Let me, let me check in with my partner. Let me yeah. see, you know, or um, especially yeah. when, when um, carrying and running the show and not, not chilling and relaxing. <laughs> Or enjoying a nice like, um, a nice day off or things like that. Yeah. You know, it's it's really good to just share um, share that that project that yeah. that that um, that balance and. No, I mean, and and I think the biggest thing with our show is, um, you know, when twenty eighteen came around, um, I was getting a more eyes open view on everything. I was starting to make more content and yeah. release more content and stuff. Um, but 2018 was also a very rough year for me. 2018 is the year I broke my ankle. I remember that. And uh, was it 2018 or 2019? 2018. And uh, I had broke my ankle, so I was out of work for two months. Um, and I was living with my mom for the time being for those two months because um, work schedule at this house was kind of all over the place. My dad wouldn't be there. And I kind of had to be under a care 
um, not really 24-7, but from when I woke up, you know, to when I went to bed, I had to be taken care of. I had to be, you know, you know, I had to have people bring stuff to me and stuff. So I needed someone to care. And with my mom and everybody, like when my, my sister, my stepsister would go to work, you know, she would take care of me in the morning. Yeah. Uh, my mom would, uh, I'd, I'd wait like an hour or two. She would come home from work and then, you know, take care of me. My grandma was living uh, still down the street at the time. She had not moved to Washington, so she would come down and check up on me. And then my, my mom's husband would come home and help out and stuff, too. Oh, man. And, you know, I, I really did feel bad because, you know, here I am, a 20-year-old 20, 20 man, you know, with his mom. I just broke his ankle, and it feels like I'm a fucking kid again. I'm, I, felt, I felt useless at that point. I, 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 I was doing – I was still grinding out content the best I can – you know, HHN announcements were coming out that oh, year, man. and I had podcast guests lined up, and um, I still did those podcasts um, via Skype, and um, I, I tried my best to work any way I can, um, and then after the broken ankle thing happened, um, that's when Sammy stepped in, and um, oh, we really started vibing there and collaborating and stuff, and um, it was actually after, after haunt season 2018 you stepped in, huh? Yeah, because I didn't move back until November. Yeah, so after haunt season 2018, uh, you know, he came in and, you know, that's when I asked him, like, hey, I need a new co-host. Yeah. And he yeah. came on, he's like, listen, dude, I don't know if I will be able to last a whole 30, 45 minute conversation, so I'll try my best at this, but just know we're probably only going to have to film for like 30 minutes or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and not because I can't talk. Yeah. Believe me, once you get me on a topic, <laughs> I, I care about. Yeah. It's I, just like I think he was more. Were you just more light, nervous right? in the beginning? No, no, it was. It had nothing to do with that. It, it really boiled down to, hey, let's talk horror, and I'm like, I don't know anything. I've probably seen <laughs> 15 horror movies in my entire life at that point. Yeah. Wow. I so, mean, maybe a little bit more, but like, I don't know HHN because at that point I refused to go. Yeah. Didn't know Not Scary Farm. Refused to go. Didn't watch horror movies because I refused to watch them in theaters. Yeah. I mean, now that's changed, considering we watched... We watched two today. Just two oh, today. Oh, that's right. Or actually, I, I would <laughs> consider it was the like, like a thriller. It was like a thriller. I mean, it had like... But Invisible Man was... Yeah, it definitely was... Horror. Right, and I mean, I would say my chops have gotten better. I mean, I lost my chops a little bit in terms of... Yeah. Getting scared. He's better. He's a lot better. I mean... I mean, yeah. both of you guys, man. You guys, like, he went carry toward... the weight of everything. It's your guys' message, the way that you guys' personalities bounce off each other, and the response of the audience, the response of the speakers, and... And just, it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, I, for lack of a better phrase, two peas in a pod, but yeah. just, you can't have one without the other, you guys. Yeah. The, the partnership, the co-anchorship, and yeah. just carrying the channel really shows just the, the amount of, um, you know, effort that's made into something like this. No, yeah, and I think the biggest thing with us was, um, when agreeing to come on to this, I mean, I, eventually he was just the podcast co-host, yeah. and... Yeah. It wasn't until, like, summertime he actually started getting way more involved in the channel when we first went to, like, Midsummer Scream and right. started doing, like, Summer of Guests and stuff. He got way more involved, and people started recognizing him, you know? People would come up to us at the convention and start recognizing him a little bit and, you know, know who he was. And, I mean, I think that's one of the best feelings about doing this channel is as small as we are, for someone to come up to us and take the time to say hi or something. Oh, definitely. Um, but I, I think even more, like, just to come say hi to us is always nice. Yeah. But when they say, like, hey, we really enjoyed X, Y, or Z. Oh, right. And make it personal. Like, oh, like, for example, today when someone stopped us, they were like, yeah. we really enjoyed Star Character Appreciation Month. We were like, wait, what? Like, yeah. cool. Like, you're actually watching it and you're paying and attention, you know? It's one of those things for me. It's like, I never know how to react to those situations. Yeah, because, because you're this... on guard and you're like, wait, I did that? Wait, let me... And well, it's like, yeah, not only and... that, it's just like, as small as the channel as we are, like, it almost feels like this is probably this is probably what fucking celebrities feel like when they get stopped. I mean, I, I think at this point they're fucking used to it because they've done so much. But like yeah. when you first start and you're as small as us, you're like, oh shit, people are actually watching yeah, our it's stuff, like, wait dude. A second. It's like, yeah, like yeah. You, saw like, you actually you before? actually watch that stuff, man. That's, <laughs> you actually watch my content. Yeah, I mean, like oh, it, like well, especially when we went, like with Horn Eyes and TLAB, like they were getting stopped a lot. And yeah, left and like, right. It would be like, oh dang, like okay, like are people actually you watching our stuff? But it's always refreshing when you get, like, that one interaction. Because just one will keep you going. Oh, yeah. Oh, even if, even I, if it's I, a like I had video that or one, comment, like, last week. Yeah. yeah, like, last, so, like, I, I just thought about this right now. 
Um, when I went out to go and do some, some work for a nonprofit, um, yeah. I was a participating artist and I showcased my work for the very first time on a professional level as far as just all the content that I had. And I was just, you know, setting up and then this guy with like um, long hair and glasses and he's got like, um, he's got a case on him. And he walked up to me and he's like, hey, he's like, I know you. And he's like, you're the, you're the graphic designer. And he's like, you just put up something in, in, San, uh, in uh, Sunken City. I was like, yeah, that was me. And he's like, and you just did that right there, right? On the rock? I was like, yeah. And then so he told me he was an intern for the organization. And so he was, he was scanning my stuff and he saw me on social media. And so we just, we just got to talking. And I told him about uh, my experience working in a similar situation as far as being in a nonprofit organization, yeah. promoting the arts, and really um, celebrating art. And I think it felt it felt so unique because the the roles were reversed you know yeah. like at one point i was that intern who looked up to like my my favorite artist at the current at the current time and he's still just a very well well esteemed and well accomplished um artist for what he does out in the street and really promoting this sense of positivity and, and hope and optimism uh through his word um and i was that intern i <laughs> i walked up to him and i was like i was like you're you're him and he and um and granted, he was a he was a Zelda fan. He was he was really awesome, and I was a huge fan of just his work. But like, he was just releasing the book at that time. I bought the book. I was reading it, and I just really loved the idea of a guy who was in college, yeah. you know, for screenwriting, and he turned into he turned into a street artist. He turned into an artist. At first, he initially thought that he wasn't he he didn't he didn't feel like an artist yeah. because you know he just had a sharpie. And then he posted it out, and then people started liking his work, and and just that alone was was something to keep him going. Oh yeah. And and then the tables were turned. The intern, you know, shared his story with me. Yeah. And we pretty much just hung out. And you know, no, dude, it's literally the coolest feeling. I mean, we go to conventions now, and as we grow more, I mean, there's more of a, an audience and and stuff. And we're not the type of people, because um, I've met people. Who run social media pages and like yeah. you know on social media they're one person and then when you finally get to meet them in that they're like a whole different person oh totally we are not we don't put on any wall when we film our videos we don't we don't put on any show or anything we are who we are yeah i mean the, the thing about i mean and i'm not talking shit about all these channels because a lot of these channels are my friends but you know i mean i i could see why they put on a pg kind of facade and oh, everything totally. because you know they're, they're they want a status of professionalism yes. and, and i completely understand that that's and that's how you get around in this business but mm -hmm. for me and sammy it's like dude we're talking about horror majority yeah. of horror is rated r yeah yeah our content totally. is probably going to be rated r yeah and that's 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 the thing is that you guys which which with every with every person who's sending a message uh, with any person who's trying to sell a product or trying to sell an idea or things like that, I mean, first and foremost, guys, you gotta know your audience. Yeah. Right? So you guys are well well esteemed in your guys' knowledge of the community and the horror community, and yeah. you, guys, you guys already know that. I mean, dude, you go to these events, yeah. you know, you see people dressed up, a lot of them wearing black. Yeah. A lot of them probably listen to metal, too, like mm -hmm. me. A lot of them probably... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're Satan worshippers. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I know. You know, yeah, I mean, and we don't so judge broad. at all. We don't because yeah. this is the community that we love. Yes. Yeah. And at the end of the day, whether you're worshiping one person or you listen to one thing or you know you, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're a fucking family. You know, yeah. we all. Yeah. And, and Rick West put it best. You know, especially with Midsummer Scream, one of the big things we talked about was amidst all the bullshit that is going on in the world. Yeah. Politics. You know, health wise. Everything Midsummer Scream is that sanctuary you can show up to and just vibe with your family. That wow. is that is just your family right there, dude. Like everyone is there for the same interest. Everyone's there to put their bullshit out the door and just be there to have a good time. And yeah. I think that's a, the biggest thing about our channel is every we're just here to listen. If you want to sit down and listen to us anywhere from five to twenty minutes long, however long our videos are. We're all, all we're asking is for a little bit of your time just to kind of sit down, escape your bullshit, or, or, you know, whatever's going on in your personal life, whatever's going on in the world, just escape it for, like, a couple minutes with yeah. us, you know, and let's talk horror. That's that's always been kind of our motivation going into these videos, and the same thing with, with podcasts. That's why I love collaborating with people because, you know, fans get excited when 
a, a channel they watch and then another channel they like or they watch, you know, they get together and they do a video. Yeah. And oh man, it's like the just like the best of both worlds. So it's like for me, one of the biggest things that I try to fuse together with any kind of um, polarity, you yeah. know, um, such as two different channels, two different two different ideas, um, is just creating where's that where's that unique divide, you know, like yeah. um, this one segment that I did of uh, you know, Biggie Smalls and Tupac, uh, just the reason why I, uh, one of the teachers asked me, she's like, you know, why, why do you have these two gentlemen uh, right here on your table? And I remember explaining to her, well, these guys were poets first before anything. Yeah. They, you know, they had their message and they shared their story. And despite all of it, um, my biggest hope was to see what the future could have been uh, for both of them in collaboration, collaborating together. And yeah, like you had said, like you had said it yourself, you know, seeing these two channels or these two biggest things that go on, you know, in your life, in your world of view, um, and having them fused together is just the biggest um, gratitude that those channels can do. Yeah, no, me and Sammy, are, we're 100% real when we're on camera and yeah. off camera. It's like, we know who our audience is, we know how we are in real life, and that's just who we are. I'm not going to put on a mask for any major organization if it guarantees us to get to a certain place where we need to be. It's like, listen, I love all these places that I go to, and I love all these things, and I love all these people who I meet. In the yeah. end of the day, if you can't recognize me for who I am, it's like, you know, I, I mean, I understand that. I get yeah. it. You know, And, and I, think it, I think it boils down to, I think the agreement we have with one another is that first we're people. Yes, people first. People right. first, no matter what. Yep. We're... See, see each other for the people that we are. Uh, and then we're both fans of the community. Yeah. And then somewhere down the line, and I don't know how far down the line that is for both of us, then we're YouTubers. Yeah. yeah you know, content YouTubers. creators. But the, I think the majority of the reason why at least I do it is I want people to, I mean, because I, I like to talk and I like yeah. to share my opinion about everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think it's because I want people to get a, my perspective and know what my life experiences are, whether I, I share those or not, yeah. um, and how those have shaped my worldview and my view of watching a movie or going to an event or covering a convention or whatever, whether I, I exactly say it or I, or I just say it, or I don't say it, but communicate it other ways, I'm going to allow them to see, okay, through the, my, my lens and my life, <clears throat> especially in the opportunities of, for example, let's just say they live in like Kansas and they're watching our content. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, maybe they don't have the opportunity to come see, you know, our walkthrough of Shadowlands. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, not Scary Farm. Or, you know, <clears throat> or maybe they do live here in, like, Long Beach and they're like, you know what? I really enjoyed that maze. Let me watch your walkthrough or let me watch your commentary on it or let me watch. Or even for the people who just are not, you know, they don't have, they're not brave enough to want to go yet, yeah. you know, and they yeah. want to just see oh, how the right. events are like. I mean, I was that kid. Yeah. Years ago, I Especially was like ten year olds and eleven year olds. Oh yeah. They're gonna see, you know, they're gonna they're gonna be curious. They're gonna want to see, like, oh, like, you know, they all they've heard about it. You know, they've never like yeah, seen it. They want to see. They want to get a visual. And I think with YouTube, it's a perfect platform for our way to kind of get. Because we got, I'll be honest, we got fans out of the way in Florida too. That's right. Yes. Like we collab with so many channels out in like the East Coast that like since that collaboration, they like that channel and they'll come see us. Yeah, and oops, sorry. <laughs> and, yeah. and they're like. They're inviting you out to their haunts, like in Texas or New Mexico, uh, around this time. I remember you telling me like you've had these invites, but it was just a matter of like commuting. No, yeah, we got we got a uh, last year. I mean, and shout out to the Queen Mary, man. They were so open arms with us, and they were so nice to invite us out to their media preview nights and stuff. We had gotten uh, access media to go to um, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. And so we went, uh, me and my photographer, Robert, we went, and we had a blast. They hooked us up with uh, free badges, free front-of-the-line passes all night. Man. And they even hooked us up with, like, three free drinks, like, alcoholic drinks, which is, if you live in California, <laughs> alcohol is not cheap. Yeah. And especially if you go to, like, premium. bars and stuff, they're, they're looking at, like, ten anywhere from 10 to $15 a drink, especially in an event like that. Oh, good. Yep. Um, so they were so nice that uh, they were launching a – another event out in orlando called dark horizon which was wow. this was the first year it was ever going to happen and they invited us out again for that media problem is we don't live out in florida or we can't just book a flight to you know for that 
that week just to go out there and do that. As much as we would love to do that, we can't do that. We yeah. don't. We just don't have the funds for it. I mean, planning a, a trip like that is months prior. You know, prior. So we could, we couldn't just do that. So we actually sent um, some of our friends out there who actually do a channel as well, uh, Lost TV. And you know, we just told them, you know, just represent Knights of War. Just go there, have a good time. Just say you're with the Knights of War. And he put out amazing content, you know, and he had a good time and, you know, he, he made sure, you know, and uh, we kind of li like to look at them as like our extended Knights of Horror family out on the East Coast Definitely. because there's so many great channels that, uh, in the horror community, theme park community that are out there. Um, we, and we've had the fortunate enough to meet a lot of, uh, bigger YouTubers, yeah. but they're still small YouTubers. But like when I mean bigger, smaller YouTubers, like they're in the hundred thousands or something. And one of our favorite ones who we, we were seeing a lot. Um, when he was down here is uh, Adam the Woo who is a uh, he's just like a vlogger he's a traveler and he goes to all these theme parks and we got to see him a lot over haunt season and we got to actually have conversations with him one of the nicest guys ever and he would he eventually got to the point where he would go out of his way to come talk to us oh wow so that was really cool of him to do so and I, I really appreciate that but I mean with this channel it's like I, I when I get the opportunity to collab with somebody or if they're small people like I always say yes because yes, I, when you're collabing with people who are smaller you know I look at it as I was at that same exact area at that point in my life you know I was I was there when I was first starting YouTube it was it was hard to struggle and to collab with people yeah and yeah. then when I finally got to collab with people it was it was awesome and through collaboration I've made so many friends through YouTube that it's like it's uh, it's unreal like and through the YouTube I've made so many friends in the haunt industry and all these haunts like I, I've met so many amazing people doing this job and it, I'm not even getting paid for it I mean it's yeah, just yeah, it, right? it, I mean, it, you know until you, until you hit until you hit a thousand subscribers in a certain amount of hours like 4,000 hours watched on YouTube you know it, it is a struggle yeah yeah I mean I'm working a full-time job Monday through Friday and then you know on the weekends doing nights of horror not getting paid at it at all yeah. spending money out of my own pocket to go to conventions and stuff but it's the sacrifice that I am willing to take to build up my channel and eventually down the road get a bunch of viewership to hopefully get paid one day and you know I mean when 2019 came around you know Sammy really started stepping up and you know his biggest thing was of course you know he was scared at the time to go to a lot of these events mm -hmm. You know, and I and I, I completely understand. You know, yeah. I was one, I was that kid one time where I was scared of shit. Some people are just easily scared of stuff, and um, you know, so when Sammy, when it was time for Sammy to you know make a decision as if he was gonna go or not, he actually stepped up to the plate and bought tickets to all these events, went with me to all these events, and it turns out he had a fucking time of his life. No, definitely, I did have a time of my life. But I want to touch back on a couple points about like collaboration as well. Definitely, um, yeah. just in the overall perspective of life, I think. Uh, you know, there's a saying, iron sharpens iron. And yes. I think every time you have the opportunity to collab with people, um, you, you should take those opportunities. Yes. Because so there's things that you're good at that you may be able to help them become better at. There's things that they're better at and they can help you become better at. Yeah. Um, or, you know, if you guys are both pretty good in that area, you guys can help sharpen one another up. And, you know, at the end of the day, making, you know, speaking on, on, on loving one another and growing one another and seeing... Yes other people's success and I think that's one of the reasons I like collabing with people as well is even if they're bigger channel than us or if they're a smaller channel than us or right around the same area you know we're going out of our way to, to to see one another grow like for example like you know Losh you know our boys on the east coast like Eddie we Tayman, Eddie Tayman, same yeah. you know like these you know we first of all we we're, we're fans of one another we want to see each other do good you know mm -hmm. Um, and if there's something we can't do, like, hey, like, bro, like, go check their channel out. Like, you know, well, obviously, you know, we're not out of Orlando's HHN, but it's like, bro, like, you want to see Orlando HHN? Yeah. Go watch our boy Zombie Chris. Go that's, watch our boy Eddie Tayman. That's our biggest thing, too, is, like, you know, I mean, a lot of people come to our channel, you know, what about HHN Orlando or something? You know, it's like, we'll, we'll reference people in our videos. Like, well, there's people out there that cover that. And I'm not saying we don't like covering it. It's just like it's not, you know, it it's really, not in their current ability. It's really not relevant to us. I mean, it, we we love it. Yeah. And if we had the opportunity to go out there every year to just go see HHN Orlando, we would. Oh, I'd jump on it quick. But I mean, it's not really relevant to us in SoCal, so we yeah. don't cover it as much as we do 
the, as they do in the East Coast. So we reference people like, hey, go check out this person. Go check out. There's three big YouTuber or you know three small channels that I really like to reference, um, and some of uh, some of good friends of the channel too. Uh, Eddie Tamet is our boy. I, we actually do a, a little series uh, every now and then for HHN. Great channel. Lost TV. Um, they're amazing people. Um, we've talked to them many times, and they have um, an amazing channel as well. And then Zombie Chris, who is probably like the biggest out of the three out there, but he, the hard work and dedication he puts to his channel, and I, I think I honestly think the guy's really hard on himself um, because he does put a lot of hard work and dedication to the channel. And yeah, some videos might not do good, some actually might do really well, and that's just a sacrifice you're gonna have to make doing YouTube. I mean, it really is a hit or miss with YouTube. It really yeah, is totally. like, okay, I can put this video up, I can put up an HHN video tomorrow and it can blow up immediately. Or I can put up a, a review about a movie and it won't do as good. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you, you learn from the mistakes. You learn what people like. And it's like, yeah, if I could make HHN content every week, I would, but there's only so much you can talk about about that event until announcements come out, until ticket sales yeah. go on sale. Per, you, there's only so many predictions you can make with Halloween yeah. Nights that it's like after a while, you just, you, you gotta come up with other stuff. Oh, or you're just gonna get burned out. And, oh, right. And then I think this is another thing for just life in general. Wow. Uh, is that when you when you start feeling yourself getting burnt out, um, you always have got to revisit it and go, why am I doing this? Yeah, definitely. Why why do why do I want to continue to do this? And, you know, I know there was times, especially like last year's, you know, we were ending in October, November. It's like, man, do we bring the camera out tonight to not, or do we just go? You know what? Let's remember why we're here because first first and foremost, we're fans. Yeah. Um, and you know, our mental health is important. Um. And making sure that we're happy and content on where we are. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, and so saying, you know, some nights I'd say, you know what? Let's put our phones away. Let's put our camera away. Yeah. And let's just sit and be in the moment. Yeah. yeah. Just veg out and forget, you know, especially like disconnecting. Yeah. And yeah. Know, getting fresh eyes on another on on a, on another day and yeah, just getting that time to just decompress and say like, I ain't doing shit today, and yeah. then just kick back and. Just That's exactly it. how it was at Knott's. Yeah, right? I mean. I would bring my camera every night because the thing with Ghost Town is like you don't know when, what, what's what's gonna happen. What's gonna yeah. happen? I mean, they always had such good moments, and I wanted to capture them all on camera. But some of those moments are just good to remember. I mean, yeah, yeah I, we do get a lot of the characters come up to us like, "Man, I wish you would have recorded that." I'm like, "Yeah." I mean, but you know, I mean, it's kind of a pain just to carry out my camera all night. And, oh right. Yeah, you know, I, I, there's some nights I just wanted to really chill and stuff, but and not, and not even just the pain about it. It's the idea of. When you have that camera in your hand, although we're the same people that we are on camera, off camera, uh, on the mic, on the off the mic, you your mind is automatically in content creator mode. Yeah. When that mic's in your hand, or when your phone's in your hand, or whatever, That's you're right. like, okay, what shot am I looking for? Yeah. What should I be keeping my eyes on? Oh yeah. Um, and sometimes it, it can take away from the experience because you're not living in that moment. Yeah. I think there's nothing more beautiful than uh, living in the moment because you only have so much time on earth. Oh, unfortunately um, and although it's great to look back on photos and videos I just sometimes it's thinking back to the feeling it gave you yeah that is yeah. always the best because you can't always capture that feeling when you rewatch something yeah, yeah. Um, but you can always remember like although like for example you know we had went to go to the opening of Rise of the Resistance at Disneyland when that opened um, in January and although you know we didn't bring our campers or whatever both Tony and I can talk about every single feeling we Every have. detail from the audience reaction. And it was a relief because a lot of the people we went with are theme park, you know, the updaters. Yeah, 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 and they, they make videos about theme parks and stuff. And we were so relieved to watch everyone be filming this but us. We were like, at oh, once, wow. we can just chill and enjoy the moment. Yeah. Just... Rather than fucking... I don't know, having to record something, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's... Make sure your camera's on and just all these other thoughts that yeah. go on with the... What am I going to say? How am I going to react on oh, camera? Right. Yeah, making an <laughs> intro, having to potentially film the ride POV and just ruining the experience for it, you know what I mean? It's like, I think for me and Sammy, we, we were just we were just happy to be there, you know I mean? And uh, we, we were helping everyone out if they were with us. We were with our buddies, Tilly V, so... When they would film stuff, we would jump in and you know give our opinion, but it, it wasn't our focus that day. Our focus was to get on this ride, have a good time, and just be fans of the damn thing. You know, I, that's why I'm glad we just cover horror sometimes, Definitely. because <laughs> if I had to do theme parks, I'd probably be dead. 
I I would oh, could, I, I could not do this. Being like a Disney blogger, I mean, yeah, I mean, there so I know so many, and, and, and you know what? And I don't and I don't mean I don't mean mean to be mean saying this, but I think Disney community is probably one of like the biggest and kind of like if you fuck up, they're gonna catch you on that kind of shit. Community, it's like the if you say something even the slightest wrong, they'll correct you on it completely. Yes. And it's like I don't want to say they're cancerous, but it's like they're they're not like. I think with every community, there's a there's a group of people that can become can- cancerous, become yeah. negative. Yeah, I mean, I mean, cancerous. I think that's not a, the best term, but can can spew a negativity that over exaggerates. Yeah, yeah. over exaggerates the situation and makes it seem like everyone in that community is great. I mean, there's, or that way. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people like that in the HHN community. The thing about us, though, I choose to ignore it. I don't yeah. go on the subreddit pages. I don't go read what people are saying about it. You know, yeah, what I mean, totally. I don't go. I don't. I don't make it my mission to go on Twitter and just, oh, what is everybody saying about this announcement? You know, like, yeah. my opinion is my opinion. Like, you either like it or you don't. And, you know, I mean, that's always been the model of the channel. It's like, you either like us or you don't. I mean, you can either like us for our content, or if you don't like us, like, I, I am really sorry. Yeah. I mean, totally. I'm sorry that we're not getting your attention. Um, I can, con- I, I'd be more than happy to guide you towards some of my friends who are more either into detail or they cover more. I yeah, mean, definitely. and that's just that's just the way YouTube works. They either like us or they don't, and that's just always been our attitude. You either like us or you don't like us. And I'm not trying to be a dick or anything about it. It's just, you know, there's so much negative in the world already. Yeah, definitely. I just right? don't. I don't. I choose to ignore it because I already hear it so much on media. Oh. I always hear it on, on. It's all over social media, and it's just like I'm tired of hearing it. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I do YouTube to get away from all that. Definitely. And the last thing you want is negativity, and it's so. 2019 uh, was a huge year for us. Um, bring it back to a positive note. I mean, Midsummer Scream, that was our second year attending Midsummer Scream. And, um, you know, the first year we went, all I brought was one camera and a tripod. Didn't know how screwed I was going to be. Uh-huh. And immediately Winter. learned the, the following year, okay, we got to go all out. So, battery swaps. And... Oh, batteries. <laughs> well, the batteries is always a must for any camera. But, <laughs> totally. I mean, dude, Midsummer Scream... <laughs> We did like four podcasts. We did all these panels. We we got to the point. We actually wrote out a schedule for the weekend of what we were doing from the time it opened to the time it closed. I think yeah. I remember hearing that. And too. we and I and you know me. I'm not a schedule guy. Oh. You're the schedule. Guy. <laughs> I'm, You're the schedule I'm guy. The schedule I'm not. Guy, yeah. I'm not the schedule guy. The planner. The brain. The, the <laughs> when it comes down to stuff. I mean, I when it's stuff like that, you have to schedule it. And Rick West said it amazing he he was amazing when he came on he said yeah. we purposely put that much content yeah, over program over program it just so you got to make tough decisions you either go to this panel or you go to that panel you either go wow. to the show floor or you skip that panel you either go to the hall of shadows or skip that you know it's like he, they purposely do that so that you feel that way so that there's never any downtime at that convention oh yeah which was amazing so the second year uh 2019 when we went back we brought like three bags of stuff mm-hmm. I had a backpack full of all my equipment, tripods, multiple cameras. Um, I brought my laptop, all my sound equipment, my lighting equipment, um, my freaking my rigs, everything. We brought so much equipment that we were over prepared for stuff. Um, and the second day, that Sunday actually, we actually that was when we brought the laptop in because we were filming so much content and stuff. The camera was actually running out of space. So I had to upload while I was waiting in line for panels. Um, oh, wow. I had to upload all my footage to my computers just so I could have more space. Those, like, 64 gigabyte yeah. cameras? We oh. were running out of space. We were doing, like, hour-long panels. We were, you know, filming the show floor, the Hall of Shadows, interviews, podcasts. Like, and the podcasts were, like, anywhere from 30 to an hour long. You know what I mean? Like, 30 minutes to an hour. And, and I think it's always good to remind yourself of why we do that. Because, oh, obviously, totally. once again, we can totally just be like, you know what? We paid... A hundred and twenty-five dollars. We're gonna enjoy it. You know? yeah. yeah, we're gonna enjoy it. You know what? We're gonna shoot a vlog. Maybe it's just gonna be straight off our phones. But no, we're like, we, you know what? We know that there's people across the country make it to this convention. Can't know? maybe can't make it. Can't afford to be there. Yeah. So you know? we we film these panels so people can watch. Especially the biggest one every year is Halloween Horror Nights. Oh yeah. They always are announcing no something there, and we make sure to cover that because announcement season is huge on our channel. And, um, you know, there's people overseas that can't make it and they want to see behind. Because a lot of the times it's not just the announcement. They show behind the scenes of, like, building the mazes, building masks, sculpts, and stuff. And a lot of people are interested in that. Yeah, they want to see, like, 
they want to see the behind the scenes and and see yeah. like what these products could do what these um you know pieces of art could turn into yeah and like setting up the sets setting up the narrative behind yeah, yeah. all of these uh, stories programs. and they even bring stuff from previous years to show off that if people are fans of that maze you can watch it but i mean i think that week alone we uploaded something like 20 anywhere from 21 to 25 videos that week oh wow yeah, 21 to 25 videos of that week and we had everyone contacting us <laughs> as far as our friends and stuff like you guys are grinding hard man it's like dude we just have all this content we need to release you know yeah. and it's like you guys are uploading you guys upload like 20 something videos this week i'm like i know but it's just interviews that we did walkthroughs that we did the, the vlogs that we did the panels that we did it was like we just want to get the word out there about this convention and when we told rick west that he goes wow he goes that's a lot of content and don't think we don't go don't think it doesn't go unnoticed we after the convention's over, we go and see how much people, how much content is getting put out and stuff. And wow, I mean, from there it was it was a small it was a small break. From there, we had about a month the haunt season started up, and we were back on the grind again. Every week was an opening of a different haunt. We'd attend that, cover that, and then um, you know we we get a bunch of footage of the scare actors, you know, and and edit those into compilations of like, music and stuff like that. Or if we wanted to use it as B-roll footage for this year, when we talk about the events, we have it. And, you know, I mean, and then we got, we started getting invited out to home haunts, which, I mean, I knew, I've always heard about and I've always, you know, known about, but I've never actually been to one. So uh, shout out to our boys, the Bloodshed Brothers. They actually are uh, slowly transitioning to make their own kind of big haunt. And they did a big step this year with uh, transitioning to, uh, um, Terror and Train Town, which is at the Railway Museum uh, here in California, oh, nice. and they had two mazes: one amazing, like uh, old school Halloween vibe maze, and a blackout maze, which was really cool. This year, I think they plan on bringing three. So little by little, they're trying to build their own haunt, and I think it's an amazing thing. And then we went to the Pirates Cave, um, which was out in what Tustin or yeah, it was in Tustin. It was somewhere. Yeah, it was out in that area, and. They invited us out. They wanted to show us behind the scenes tours, so that was a great opportunity to go before our lights were on, and um, uh, all the effects were on. So they showed us how every effect was achieved. Uh, we got to interview them a little bit, and then we got. He told us he's like, "Listen, when this thing starts, just come up to us. We'll let you guys in." And of course, you know, being told that that's awesome. But you know, we had gone through it. We went through it once, filmed it, and then we went through it. I think two more times, but. The, the last two times, we actually let everyone else go through. We didn't want to be mean and just like, hey, we're here to do it again. Like, we wanted everyone else to experience it first, yeah. you know, before. Because we didn't want to go in there with our lights on, with our cameras on and stuff. Because they were completely cool with that. But we didn't want to go in there ruining the experience for everyone else. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because we're trying to get lights on footage with our, with our lights and stuff. And then lights off footage and stuff. And we're trying to get all this camera shots and everything and reactions. But we don't want to ruin anyone else's experience. So... That was an incredible opportunity, and I, of course, like I said, Queen Mary invited us out, which was awesome. We got free tickets to go to the LA Haunted Hayride, which were given to us at Mid Center Screen, which was right. really awesome. I remember hearing that too, and yeah, that was right. the Knott's Annual Pass was an amazing uh, bargain this year, and Halloween Horror Nights we went a couple times this year, um, and 2019 was just a, such a great year. We actually got to be friends with uh, the composer of Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which is one of my all-time favorite horror movies. And uh, we got to interview him, and now he's one of our good friends. Like we have each other's numbers now. Like, oh, if you would if you would have asked me in 2010, you're gonna be friends with the guy who did the music for Killer Clowns. I would be like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm not. But he's one of my good friends, and I I am so thankful for all the people that I've met in this industry, from Ted Doherty to Rick West, um, even some directors that we know, Jed Bryan, Unlisted Owner. He, a lot of his stuff is on our set. Um, <laughs> And, you know, haunt legends uh, from the haunt industry and everything and um, all the channels that we're friends with. I mean, here we are in 2020 and we're at 800 and something subscribers, almost to a thousand. And if you, like I said, if you would have told me this three years ago when I started, like, you're going to be at a thousand in 2020, dude. And like, I would have been like, no, I'm not, dude. This ain't going to take off. But yeah. it, it shows that after all the hard work and dedication that we've put into this channel, it's paying off. And I think. Our story is just beginning. We're only three years in this channel, two years in this podcast. Sammy's been on. He's been really, uh, you know, pulling his weight around too since he's joined, and I can't be more thankful for that. Um, I've gotten the, like 
I said, amazing opportunity to collab with people. We've been invited to places, and you know, we've gotten a whole team together. I mean, we got photographers when we need them. Um, amazing people to help out. We're for the future now. I mean, we're we're planning on making a short film, a couple short films this season. You know, you've been helping storyboard a lot of those. That's right. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I've been having amazing resources come up to me with actors. I mean, and and people lending me sets and. You know, just every opportunity that I get to collab with people or work with people is, is just is, is just a blessing. Um, and, yeah, man, that is basically the story of Knights of Horror, really. Yeah, and I think just speaking out just to the general audience and is, like, I, I think any one of you has the potential to do that. Um, I think we're all been graced with creativity, whether we know it or not. We all have the ability to have a creative outlet i think that's very important in our day-to-day lives is find something to um, you know share a creative side um oh definitely um, because like i said i think we've all been graced with it we're all graced with a, a voice whether you have a speaking voice or not you have the ability to write you have the ability to you know if you do speak to speak um and i think in the in the stresses of, of the world especially as, as, as i've learned as i've gotten older you you need to be able to to share What's going on? Um, you know, whether you're writing through poems, your, kind of through your vision in a way, your, yeah. your point of view. Yeah, um, whether you're writing poems, whether you're on a podcast, whether you're shooting YouTube vlogs, yeah. whatever you're doing, um, you know, graphic design, music. I think you you got to do that because that's what's going to give you life. Um, yeah. Because obviously we live most of the time a very mundane life. You have your Monday through Friday work, and <laughs> yep. you got to make that. You know, you got to pay your bills, uh, unfortunately, and you got to do these types of things, but. I think find something you love, um, and, and and stick with it because you know probably within thirty days you're not going to probably be great at it. But if you yeah. you know see what happens in a year, see what happens in two years, um, and stick with it and see what doors open and always be willing to say yes. Yes. Uh, and if you find <laughs> yourself not enjoying it, think back. Okay, why am I doing this? Yeah. Why did I do this in the first place? Why do I love it? And if it's for, you know, if you're in it because, well, you know, I heard you're going to make a lot of money doing this or something like that, then maybe not the best reason to do it. But if it's yeah. like, I can lay my head down at the end of the night knowing I did something cool and I found joy in that, then you know what? Keep pursuing it. Because I can tell you this right now, and that's the biggest thing that um, I've been seeing a lot with these channels. Um, it's like, you know, some people are probably in it for the money. And I've said yeah. time and time again, yeah, the money's going to be nice when we get it. Totally. But that's not why I'm doing this. Yeah, I'm doing this because this is my hobby. This is my getaway from what's going on in the world. Yeah. yeah. This is my shell. And if we never make a dime out of it, I mean, we've made more than a dime already, but if we never made a <laughs> yeah. dime out of it, we would still have joy. We would still have joy because this is what we do to get away from all the bullshit that's going on in the world. Yeah. It's just... You've seen our president. He's a fucking kid. I don't mean to get political <laughs> real quick, but our president's a kid. Our freaking, our, you know, there's a big epidemic going around with this coronavirus, oh, and totally. everybody's freaking out. Toilet paper can't stay on the fucking shelves. Water oh, can't gosh. stay on the shelves. Now food is leaving the shelves, Dude, and it's like... I went to food for us today. Yeah, um, for... So I had to go get a, I had to go get an item, right? And um, I was getting it for a client, and so I was asking the whole group, what what do you guys want, you know? I had one staff, staff member behind me just, uh, just yelling, like, brownies, brownies, and then I hear hazelnut, um, snickerdoodle, chocolate chip cookies. And um, I was like, okay, I'll try it. I'm, I'm, in my head, I'm thinking, like, okay, I'm going to get all three. Like, it's food for less. They got a huge, huge selection. And when I get there, like you said, no toilet paper, no sanitizer. All the food is disappearing there at food for less. And I'm just looking around like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. there's all of these it carts. Is, it's really scary time, dude. Yeah, I only got brownies. It's very scary. There's no snickerdoodles there. No, and it's like, it's like, dude, I mean, I get it. People, I think it's just the, you know, the media is, is wording it all wrong. Yes. People are thinking we're going to go into martial law and we're going to be quarantined in our houses and this is just the flu. That's all it is. You're not going to die from it. More people die from the common flu that's with us every year. Yeah. Every year. It never leaves than this coronavirus, you know? And there's only been like a handful of people that died and, and rest in peace to the people who have. Yes. Yeah, it's not a good thing and everything, but people are getting scared for all the wrong reasons, you know? Just just do the simplest things. Just be aware of your surroundings of people who are sick. Wash your hands, yeah. you know, avoid any contact with, you know, anybody else's, you know, bodies or anything, you know, and 
you're fine. Yeah, and I, I think, I, I mean, if I can preach out to anyone who's listening, mm-hmm. um, is do all those things. And if you don't feel good, please stay home. Yeah. Please. And I stay know this. Stay home and watch, I, I can, our, watch I can tell you this. horror video, videos. And wa- yeah, you know, there you go. Yeah, do it. Do it. I don't care. Right? Listen to Andrew's <laughs> podcast, you know. It's yeah. <laughs> stay, stay home. I mean, obviously, I get it. Like Some people can literally not stay home because you're living paycheck to paycheck. Oh, you need yeah. every yeah. single penny that you, you earn. And even that may not be enough sometimes. But, like, I would say, you know, do Your health what, is more important than anything. Yeah, your health is more yeah, important health, than anything. First and foremost. Yeah. yeah um, and... and you know, I think it goes back to the idea of love. Love the people around you. Yes. Like, unfortunately, you know, other people, you may not know the struggles or their health struggles that some people are having, whether they have asthma, heart conditions, diabetes, or any of these other things that may put them uh, at a, a less ability to recover. So yeah. I think, you know, love people um, and love yourself and being willing to say, you know what, even if you don't have the virus, even if you just have a slight cough or a cold, you know, and okay, like, maybe this is allergies or maybe it's something else. So let me take the the correct precautions. And on that note, I will, you know, just end it there. We are the Knights of Four. I'm Anthony (laughs) Stanley. I I, I know, it's a weird way to end the podcast, but, I mean, uh, I want to thank Andrew for having us on, and I hope uh, hope to see your podcast grow and grow even more. Yeah. Um, Everybody out there, just please be safe. Um... If you guys are interested in any horror, come down to the Nights of Horror. Um, we just launched our merch website too, so that's really I cool. I saw that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, a lot of Andrew's logos are featured on the, <laughs> some of the merchandise too. So, yeah. Yeah, so go and go and go and check it out. And yeah. yeah, well, thank you guys for joining, um, turning this into a huge celebration for the channel for just bringing on, you know. Everybody bringing Hopefully, on the, uh, whole. the longest podcast on your thing so far too. So far, yeah. yeah. We, so far we are. Because not only did we have this hour and like nineteen minutes, but we did another eleven minutes on top of that. So yeah. we're looking at about an hour thirty now, that buddy. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for joining, and more to come. <laughs>